We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about the watches that I saw at Starbucks this morning. Yes, I am scraping the barrel for topics here for you, but I think it's interesting. I did a video about watches in Miami. That's where I'm at right now, a part of Miami. Um, and this is a little bit different because this morning I noticed some interesting watches at Starbucks while I was getting my cold brew. Actually, the Nitro Brew. If you haven't tried the Nitro Brew, I don't like to... Uh, necessarily plug products, but the Nitro Brew is really a different level. They infuse nitrogen. It's such a smooth coffee. I, just try it out. You'll see what I mean if you have. Leave in the comments below if you're on the Nitro Brew kick. But also, I'd like to thank you for coming back for another episode. I really do appreciate it. It looks like YouTube is changing up their algorithm, so if you like what you see or hear, um, or even if you don't and you just want to support a guy making videos for you, like, thumbs up, and also make sure to check the bell for the notifications. I really do appreciate it. Leave in the comments below things you'd like to see in future videos. Instagram, the real John P. Today on my wrist, I have an H Moser Mayu in white gold. We got this in at DelrayWatch.com. We've been getting Mosers in, but I liked it so much, I decided to add it to my personal collection, and I really enjoy this a whole lot. Moser, I want to do a video in the near future about this because I think they're doing some great things with their technology that other brands are really overlooking. So Starbucks, you know, people go to Starbucks and generally speaking, you know, it's not the flashiest of places. Can you find a cheaper cup of coffee? Absolutely. But, you know, it's not a club. It's not, you know, a day club, a night club. It's just not a place where people tend to show off. But here in Miami, people go to Starbucks and and it's typically old retired guys, which, you know, sounds like a pretty great lifestyle, to be honest with you. Nothing against old retired guys. Uh, but they go and they, they drive up in their, you know, flashy Lamborghinis and things like that. It's kind of a sight to see and some interesting things do happen there. Uh, but what I noticed was just some interesting watches on some of these characters. And I want to tell you um, what they were, what they are, and also some interesting ones here. The first one that I noticed, and it's a guy that goes there all the time, it's a Yachtmaster 2 in the gold and steel. Now, this is a watch that is pretty flashy. Now, generally speaking, Rolex wearers get into a Rolex because it's a Rolex. Of course, there's exceptions and there's watch geeks. I have a few Rolex myself, I mean, they make a great watch, but it's not always necessarily for the watch geeks, connoisseurs, or collectors. This particular watch is generally a watch that people are gravitated to because it is a little bit larger, it is a little bit more flashy, shiny, and it has that kind of basic, basically Miami vibe that, that you would kind of expect from a watch that, that serves this certain purpose. Is it a sports watch? Yes. Is it a, is it a good high quality watch? Absolutely. But generally speaking, um, you know, the type of character that is wearing this, not always, but sometimes is, you know, the guy that walks in, slaps it on the counter. I think that, uh, the, the place where he keeps slapping it on the counter every time I see this guy there, I think he's actually starting to chip away at the wood on the counter. I think it's insane to treat a watch like that, but hey, if you're not really a watch collector, you, you might not agree. Now, the next one I saw is an Oris Diver 65. Now, I, I'm pretty shocked, right? Like, Oris is a brand that delivers a lot of quality at a pretty approachable price point for the quality. And they've done this since they came out. You know, things like the Oris Aquas line and even some of the, the smaller Oris dress watches, they deliver a lot of great value. We get Oris in quite a lot at DelrayWatch.com and it makes sense because generally we work with watch collectors and the types of guys and even sometimes ladies that really go out of their way to find a great watch that delivers a lot of value especially in the mechanics and when we're talking about the diver 65 i think that it does a great job at kind of reimagining that vintage dive watch feel even that the brand themselves did many years ago and kind of wrap it into like a modern almost modern form factor at 40 or 42 millimeters, depending on, on the versions. And of course, the price is very approachable. I think the retail is roughly 2000 US dollars, but you can pick these up unworn in the gray area, gray market for roughly 1200, a little bit different on a bracelet and the dial colors. They have 
so many of these now, but I'm, I was very surprised to see this. I think, you know, on the wild outside of a watch event, I maybe have seen uh, the Norris Diver 65 once, maybe twice before. And so to see that, it, it really does kind of let you know that that person is probably a watch guy or his girlfriend or wife is a watch girl. So who knows though, I thought it was very interesting. Now, the next one I, I see quite a lot. Um, I saw a Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. It was blue dial, blue bezel, um, you know, kind of with the, the pattern on the dial there. It's caliber five. It's Tag Heuer's basically their 2824 or the Salita equivalent, depending on how you look at it or which version of the watch it is. But basically the same thing that the Etta 2824. It's a good workhorse movement. It's there's not a lot I can say about the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. I'd say that overall it's a pretty good watch. It's a good watch to get into dive watches. It's got a very modern take on dive watches, a lot more edges and uh, sharper, crisper edges than you'd see on your, you know, other dive watches from other brands. So that's very interesting to those, especially a younger guy. This person wearing it was an older person, um, but you know, Tag Heuer does make a good watch and. I have nothing that I can say bad about the Aqua Racer line. Um, at certain points in history, I've, I've owned other Tag Heuers, though I don't think that I've quite owned this specific model with the Caliber 5. Um, now this one, you might find this very interesting. So there was a, a, a much older gentleman and he was wearing a vintage paddock. Now it was, it's difficult to tell the reference number because it was a very old model. Um, and so it's difficult just to know the reference number. They all look very similar when we're talking about vintage Patek Philippe's from, you know, 1960. It, they, they all look very similar unless I looked at it on my hand, but it wasn't. It was on, you know, a guy walking around that honestly looked pretty dazed and confused. I, I'm not sure if he wasn't quite up yet or if um, he was just kind of going through that stage in his life, if you know what I mean. But nonetheless, very cool, stylish watch. It was on um, an alligator strap. Hopefully I can find a picture here that I'll place that'll look a lot like it. And you just don't see vintage dress watches very much anymore. Um, unless of course you find someone that, you know, bought that watch or got it for, you know, an anniversary, 50th anniversary or something like that um, for, you know, a, a, for wedding or something along those lines. And they just kind of wore it forever. And I think it's always very cool to see that. And, you know, the, the, the bridging of the generations for certain watches and, and just to be able to see that in the wild, especially here when everyone wants the latest and the greatest of everything, I think that's just pretty cool to see. <laughs> you know, what do you think about this? Do you think that these vintage dress watches are still relevant? Do any of you wear vintage dress watches, you know, whether stainless steel or precious metal? I would love to hear it. Leave in the comments below what vintage dress watches you have. I'm very interested to see where the vintage guys are at. Now, lastly, I don't, I don't understand this one at all. I don't know if a salesperson pulled a fast one on this guy or, you know, if perhaps, uh, you know, he went into the wrong watch drawer and pulled out something from his wife or girlfriend. I don't know, but there was someone wearing a ladies Cartier ball on blue. Now the ladies Cartier ball on blues come in 28, 33 and, and 36, you know, for the most part, the 36 is marketed uh, because it, it wears a little more slim than the measurements because of the rounded edges of the case. And very clearly this watch was either a 28 or a 33. It was a smaller guy and it looked very small. I have um, very small wrists myself, six and a half inches, which is towards the smaller side, if you're familiar. And this per this person must have had even smaller, but the watch looked so tiny, so dainty. Um, and it was, it was, it was, it was an older man too, which was the very confusing thing about this. Um, so maybe, you know, he was just used to wearing smaller watches, you know, historically they were smaller watches and, you know, when he went, he wanted to trade up or trade in, it was something, a similar size, but some salesperson somewhere, unfortunately pulled one over on this guy because he was wearing a ladies ball in blue. And the very interesting story about this is, you know, I was sitting there, I was reading, uh, you know, The Economist a little bit, catching up on some, you know, international stories, you know, some of these uh, things that are going on in the world. 
And, you know, he was wearing this watch. I noticed, I'm like, oh, that's a ladies ball in blue. What is this guy doing? And this guy, he walks over to the, these group of girls, you know, you know, older girls, but girls nonetheless, you know, still uh, very approachable. And he goes up to them and he starts talking. I'm sitting right there. And I noticed that the lady or one of the girls sitting at the table was wearing a larger size ball in blue than he was. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I have to talk about this. This is unbelievable. I thought it was very funny. And ultimately, I overheard in the conversation that she did not want to go with him to some concert he had tickets for. And he, he seemed pretty disappointed. Pointed, and then she was giggling with her friends afterwards. So maybe if he upped the size of his ball and blue or got himself into something a little bit different, he would have secured that date with a girl that was probably 30 or 40 years younger than him. I don't know, something interesting to think about, and I thought that you'd find that kind of interesting, some of the things that I run into here uh, in South Florida in the watch world. So what do you guys think? Are there any watches or surprising watches that you've kind of noticed out in the wild? We're all watch geeks, we're watch collectors, you know, as busy as we all are in our day-to-day -day life, we always manage to catch a watch here or there, even if we're not trying. It's like we have an additional sense and we just know where the watches are. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. Leave in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Federico is literally blowing some things out the door. I told him, let's not do that. Let's be a little bit more uh, conservative with the pricing, but he's giving some things away. So check that out. You can find me on Instagram, the real John P. And also leave in the comments below if you want to come to this watch party that we're talking about and planning. So leave in the comments below about that as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching. You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.